Hi, I'm Hillary Russo. Thanks for joining me for the Holistically Speaking Podcast. I'm a certified holistic health coach and havening techniques practitioner, lover of great conversation, and of course, clever wordplay, holistically speaking. So welcome to an empowering place where my guests share their transformational stories of trauma to triumph through health, healing, and humor. It's the ultimate brain candy as we find out who we are, how we got that way, and what it takes to be a happy and healthy grown-up. And be kind to your mind. I'm glad you're here. Take a slow, deep breath. How does that feel? Chinese philosopher Lao Tzu once said that a perfect man breathes as if he's not breathing. It might sound impossible, but it's actually not. It just takes time. Like with any practice, once you have a better understanding, each moment creates the space for transformation to occur. How we breathe can make a significant difference in how we live. Think about it. When you're anxious compared to when you're calm. Perfect example, right? But really, it's just the beginning. For seven years, Niraj Naik spent his life as a pharmacist, a job he says crushed his soul, had a debilitating inflammatory disease on top of that, and living well seemed really far out of reach, mentally, emotionally, physically, and spiritually. But you don't get the nickname renegade pharmacist from just giving up, because at some point, Niraj had enough. And he took what he learned as a pharmacist, combined it with his love for music and breath work, and realized his insight could not only help him heal from within, but others as well. And Soma Breath was born. White coat, not included. Get ready to breathe into this conversation and find your own inspiration on this episode of Holistically Speaking. Niraj, I just want to welcome you to Holistically Speaking. It is a joy to have you here. And having a chance to kind of learn a little bit more about you and Soma Breath and your journey is just really an incredible one. You know, we hear so many stories about people leaving the corporate world and making new choices and realizing that this is the only temple they have and they want to live powerfully and healthy. Your story is very similar to that in your own way as well. So I just would love for you to share. Yeah, certainly. Yeah. So I actually have a pretty dramatic uh, story in terms of like where I started and then ended up. And actually, what I'll go, I can go like really early on so that um, you can understand why I got into what I'm doing now, which is very based around music. Okay. So mm. I used to, when I was a kid, um, I used to love like dance music, like electronic dance music. It was quite new, up and coming stuff back then. And I always had my ambitions to do something with music, be a DJ or play live and be in a band and that kind of stuff. But, you know, in, as an Indian from Indian parents, they want you to do one of these degrees, either be a pharmacist, doctor, uh, dentist, lawyer, accountant, right? One of these things. Um, and if you go out of that, uh, you're kind of looked down upon as somebody completely crazy. And I was always like the black sheep, you know, in our family, because I would always do the crazy things. Uh, so what happened was I ended up doing a pharmacy degree, did all that. But on the side, I started to run, uh, like, I'm all about bringing community together. I get this from my mum. She's, she's a social, very social person. She, she involved with the Indian community and stuff like that in the UK. So I started to create my own community around dance music at university, and we created a society that lasted for, like, 14 years uh, beyond me being there. But also I started to run events, and I ended up running a club event that was a 2,000-capacity event for three years whilst at university. But there came a point where, you know, like this, the underground music scene can be quite hedonistic and it can take its toll, lots of late nights, partying, all of that. And there was also like a point where that music culture got quite infiltrated by people with different intentions, a lot of drugs got involved in it. It became messy. 
And I got to a point where I had to make a choice. Do I go and finish my degree or try and uh, take this event I had to the next level? But we had a lot of challenges with that. There's a lot of things going out of alignment for us. So in the end, I did what a good Indian kid would do. Listen to my parents who were going crazy. Like, you can't, like, what you do, talk about not finishing your degree. You've come so far, you've done this for years. Like, what are you doing? You're mad. So I actually, like, you know, went down the whole academic route, passed my um, uh, degree, became a pharmacist. And that's when my soul just crushed. Mm. So it was just like complete, like, death to my you know, it's ego. You know, your, your character is your ego. It's like what you know and it's who you are and the meaning you give to things. And I completely went into a career which I had no idea what I was letting myself in for. And it knocks you down because imagine you're the guy who's on stage, you're like running these big events, like everyone's like wants to be your friend, you know. It's like from that complete fall of grace to now being pharmacist in a little cubicle dishing up pills, wearing a lab coat. Uh, I mean, it was, it, was, it was kind of a huge shock to the system. So anyway, that carried on for seven years. <laughs> so, yeah. So it was like what happened was I went into that world and I saw straight away for the first time what it's really like to be working in the healthcare industry. And I always felt a little bit of intuition about there was something not right about the pharmaceutical industry because you know what you're doing is you're taking things from nature you're concentrating them and making them into things that are saleable but and things you can take over and over again for the rest of your life but it didn't seem to ever really get to a root cause or um cure anybody like permanently it just manages to uh, maintain a disease without the symptoms getting too too extreme. Yeah, we talk about that a lot in in modern and Western medicine. Rather, Western is that it's and there's a place for it, right? We know there's a place for Western med, and and just we're very fortunate to have science. But when we see that people are putting a band aid on something, or seeing treating a diagnosis and looking at a person as a symptom or a diagnosis. It's really making people wake up now. And was that kind of what you were feeling in a way? Yeah, I felt intuitively there's something not right with it. And yeah. uh, and also the amount of prescriptions people are on is just mm. astonishing. You know, people would literally go away with shopping bags full with drugs like every month. And, you know, you'd see people come in with one prescription, right? A few months later, they're on like four other drugs and they're usually to take care of the side effects of other you know, other pills that they're taking right so it's really 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 like alarming when you when you can see it from a bird's eye point of view because uh, i was coming in at it in at it from a different perspective from other people who had just been robotized by the whole education system i was i was like a total renegade at university as well i hardly went to many lectures and stuff i just didn't see the point of it um, I never thought I'd ever be a pharmacist. So I came at it with a fresh perspective. And I saw things that other pharmacists didn't really see, or they felt it as well, but they were too scared to speak up. And with me, what happened was I kept like uh, trying different ways to get out of my pharmacy profession in the music industry. I got into the music industry and I actually had a mentor who was, because uh, I, I love making music, who actually was the manager of a band called Muse. Um, mm -hmm. And he had produced very prolific. He had worked with many big bands and stuff. So I was really like blessed. I was like, wow, I've got somebody who can really take me to the next level. But what happened was he was like totally out of love with the music industry. And I was always ranting about my career in pharmacy. And he kept saying, look, I think you need to do something in the world of pharmacy. You're, you have so much passion about like, with, in terms of solving your problems here, uh, why don't you focus on that? Because the music industry, I'm telling you, is a horrible world to be in. And he was right. He took me to a big event called Medem, where lots of you know uh, music industry execs come together. 
and it was the most cold, like sharky, sleazy environment too. And it just put me off wanting to be in the music industry. And I've spoken to lots of musicians as well and artists since who all say the same thing. You know, that they, they wish they weren't in the music industry. So I was like lost a little bit, but then I'm thinking actually maybe I do, I should do something to improve the pharmacy, right? My, my job satisfaction in pharmacy, maybe that's where I'll get my breakthrough. Then what happened was I started to just get really disillusioned and I had a bit of a breakdown and I went to kicking and screaming actually, because a friend of mine bought the ticket to a Tony Robbins event. Mm-hmm. And I had no idea what, who he was or anything about it. And I was just like, is this some like kind of like scam, right? But literally it transformed my life. And the last day was the first time I heard anyone talk about health in terms of diet, nutrition, exercise, um, even breathing, right? Mm-hmm. So I was like, right, I can, I'm going to put Tony Robbins to the test and see if he's full of shit, right? Because I have a pharmacy filled with sick patients and I'm going to apply this knowledge to them. So I found a way to do it. I came, came up with an analogy of a car, right? What happens when you put the wrong fuel into your car? Like if you put petrol into a diesel, mm-hmm. it like breaks down, right? It doesn't work. Right, it so won't work. I was like, yeah, I was like, look, you have a super efficient bioengine. And what you've been doing is putting the wrong fuel into this engine because your diet is majority. When I asked, I asked them to tell me what they eat on a day to day basis. And on average, most people eat three meals filled with processed foods, right? Okay. Like very, you'd be shocked at how few people knew how to make their own food. It was incredible. And so I was in like, I was in a, a working for a corporation, which was in like an areas where it's, the common denominator would come to shop, right? So most people have been totally educated out of making healthy food for themselves. And then they drink fizzy drinks all day long and stuff like that. So I made the no factory diet rule. So try this experiment for a week. Just eat nothing made in a factory. Make your own foods. And don't drink things that come in tins and cans and bottles, Mm -hmm. right? Make your own teas and and drinks out of fresh lemon juice and, and water and things like that. So... Actually, those who took my advice, which was actually more often people did because they didn't want to rattle when they walked with the amount of pills they're taking, they, they, they actually got better. And I had doctors calling me up. I remember the first doctor who called me up, and I thought that was it. I'm in deep shit. They were like, oh, my God, what are you doing? This is amazing. I've never had results like this. Of course. <laughs> and can you keep going, keep going? And I, like, I was getting people off the drugs. Mm. So it was amazing, right? Mm-hmm. But... What happened in the end, I got promoted to the head office of a huge corporation in the UK, and I came up with a novel healthy shopping list concept, which could have helped loads of people. And that's what I thought was my big break. I was suddenly going to make a huge impact in the world with this. And I was like, yes, this was it. This is what I was supposed to do. But then six months into it, okay, I actually felt the wrath of what it's like to work for a huge corporation like this and the, the um, kind of um, lion's den that is a corporate office with middle management who are like not people that you want to associate with too much. Directors were cool actually, but middle management is like, you know, it's mm. just like hanging out with sharks. So I felt all this hostility. I'm like the new guy. Everyone was gunning for me. And actually what happened six months into it, they shelved the idea. And um, the director who actually got me the job had already left to go somewhere else. So I was on my own and they decided to shelve the idea or they watered it down so much that it was pointless. And that's when I just lost all faith in humanity, spirit, God. I was filled with this anger, frustration. And it was taking its toll and boom, it hit me. And I got this disease, ulcerative colitis, also immune disease. And then I was housebound for six, well, no, it was almost a year I was housebound. Um, and that's when I discovered how to heal, really, like how to heal, because I became the patient. And it was going a little bit deeper than just fixing people's diets. 
Also, I realized that I wasn't that clued up on diet, actually. I needed to up my game on that because I, I went with the whole vegan raw food diet thing, which works really well for, for people who have diabetes or overweight, obese, which is a lot of people. In the UK, it's a, mo- a lot of the people who come in who are on lots of prescription meds have problems with diabetes and obesity, right? And heart and one thing. One thing I want to yeah. share too, I mean, for our listeners, because you know, I come from a, a, the background of integrative nutrition and as a yeah. health coach in that area, one thing we always were lear- we learned in the program is that you can, if you keep putting things in your body that are made by people in white coats, you're going to probably wind up seeing people in white coats. Such and a good such I, a good I love that quote so much because it's so true. And It is about bioindividuality. Every person is different. And as we've, I mean, we've heard this for years. Hippocrates is known as being the father of, of the first father of medicine that let food be thy medicine, medicine be be thy food, but it doesn't stand alone because nutrition is kind of that, that secondary wheel of new, Mm. that the food we put in our bodies is the secondary, the primary being our life around us, our environment, our work, our home life, everything is that primary wheel. And the, the analogy you use with the vehicle is, is something I love. I use that too, because it's, this is really the only, the first temple and vehicle we have to take care of. Right. And in my work, mainly with the integrative nutrition side, and then also in a holistic mental health using havening techniques, which I love pairing by the way, with breath work and music, uh, there is such power in what we can put back into our own hands and realize yes. we can do that without having to pop a cap open and take a bunch of pills. So, yeah. you know, you, you speak so – it just resonates with me so deeply. And, you know, if I could just Ooh. put that into the, the, the ears of those listening, listen to this man. because he's like, You're coming from the pharmacist side of things, but now you're this renegade yes. pharmacist, which <laughs> I love that term, by the way. I love when people come up with these great terms that just embody who you are. When I was called that by the, um, I was called that by the company I was working for. They said, you're, you're a real renegade pharmacist. So you know what? It might have not worked <laughs> yeah. out with them, but much gratitude to yeah. them for putting that in your hands because we've got to shake things up a little, right? We have to. And totally, then what totally. happens when it winds up impacting our own vehicle, that's when I think sometimes the light bulb goes off. Like you went doing this for seven years in misery and then it created your own chronic illness when you were like, this isn't just about what's happening around me. I have to take care of this one first, or how am I supposed to be safe on the road in this vehicle? So the fact that you were able to embody that and bring in the other modalities or other methods along with the food, because you said it's not just about food. um, How, how did that really manifest for you? Yeah. Yeah. So, so the first thing was like, I, 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 so what happened was I was really sick and I had a yeah. dark night out of the soul moment and somebody came to my rescue as a Swami in the UK, a yoga teacher, who basically gave me a gift. She said, you've got a gift. Like if, and they say God stands for gift of desperation. I love that one as well because I was so desperate. She came to me in the most desperate moment of my life and she gave me a gift and that gift was basically she's changing my perception of my situation, which was, look, if you can – heal yourself from this without taking, you know, the, all the meds and stuff, you could become a, an amazing role model to other people, right? And you could make a big difference. So that was the first big change of perception. And then, then she taught me the foundations of Ayurveda, Pranayama, uh, yoga, meditation, all these things. And in the Ayurvedic system, I went down massively down that rabbit hole. I realized that I'd been eating the wrong foods, right, all along. and I had gone down the whole raw vegan uh, craze that was going on at the time. And I went for it and I realized from my energy type, it's not the healthiest to just go fully raw vegan or anything like that. You need more grounding, nourishing foods. And actually it was making me very, very uh, sick. The the ulcerative colitis was like 10x worse when I was on. I went from that raw vegan, then I tried all fruits and it was just making me so much worse. The ironically, what I had to do was I actually had to break some of my own 
taboos, right, uh, which are in, in the whole Hindu culture of beef and animal, like basically bone broth, colostrum, which actually is an Indian medicine. I'll t- t- talk to you about that. And what, I, what happened was like, I was like, oh my God, this stuff, I thought it was going to work, it's not working. And Ayurveda says you need a different type of diet to solve ulcer cards. You need more grounding, nourishing foods and meats are okay. So then I started, I, I listened to that Tony Robbins mantra again, model success. If you want to be successful, model success. The big mistake I was making as well at that time, and if you're listening to this and you're suffering from something, don't do this because what a lot of people do is they go on the forums and they listen to all the horror stories of people who are sick, especially like the cancer uh, research forums or, you know, these like charity-led like ulcerative colitis foundations and they have their own forums, but there's nobody on there with any solutions. They're just people complaining, moaning, moaning, oh my God, oh my God. You know, there's no yeah. help. I've taken this 10th pill and now I've got this problem. And, and I was like reading these, like stressing out even more. So I switched and I was like, no, I'm going to find people who have healed themselves and do what they do. And there was a common like thing amongst all of them, which was paleo diet and in some cases carnivore for a bit, for just a bit, not like all the time, just to heal the gut and to fix the colitis. And this is not going to be good for everybody else. Right, I'm just right. saying for people who have ulcer colitis, remember, no one size fits all. Find right. out who you are. Know thyself. That's my mantra. So actually, then I discovered in Ayurveda, uh, actually there's this um, amazing miracle food that we all consume the moment we're born. It's called colostrum. And the first milk of, um, that you consume is this colostrum. It's a sticky yellow liquid. And if you don't have it as a child, enough of it, you can get childhood issues because what it does is it fixes the lining of your gut so that you can actually digest normal food, right? Mm -hmm. So if you don't have a proper – and it also gives you immune system and it transfers antibodies from the mother. So it gives you an immune system. And 60% of our immunity is in our gut, by the way. So I was like, wow. And then I discovered that actually – it's an ancient Ayurvedic medicine because it's why the cows are considered holy in India. Like you, literally, people would worship um, cows because they give you everything you need. And the colostrum is a thousand times more potent than human colostrum. No calves are harmed because it produces so much more, four to six times the amount of colostrum that a cal- uh, uh, the calf needs, right? So the excess of the excess is taken human consumption. I really wanted to be ethical about this. And then I also realized in India, they actually have holy cows. They're really well tread, uh, fed and, and treated like gods, basically. And they use their colostrum. So I was like, okay, wow, this is amazing. It ticks all the boxes. So I started to um, uh, try this. This had the biggest, fastest impact of all, mm. as well as the breathing techniques. The breathing techniques, which I learned from Pranayama, um, were all about tapping into autonomic nervous system, switching off stress at will, and and basically uh, being able to reprogram through creating altered states, the operating system of your mind, which is the source of the problems in the first place. Because what happens is when you hold on to emotions, you don't resolve them, right? They add up. And you may have traumas that build up over time. Something could have happened in childhood that led to the next traumatic event happening and happening and happening. And you, the way our nervous system works is that we, boom, we, we, if a trauma in itself, an emotional attack of some mm-hmm. kind, it could be a situation, could be even you failed an exam, you know, like with me, I failed some exams in the past, you know, my parents coming down on me and all the pressure of life, hostility, yeah. even if you're being bullied at work or if you're in a relationship, you're getting abused or something, it builds up over time. If you don't resolve it some way, the body stores it to stop it from mm-hmm. killing you, right? And it puts it into areas of your body, into your muscles, and you create muscle memory and you create tension, okay? And a lot of people store anger and frustration in the gut. And what happens when you get tension in the gut is that the, mu- the, the blood flow in your gut narrows down and you diminish blood flow and this messes up then the whole consciousness of that whole gut and the, the natural intelligence of it. That's your gut instinct. So if you don't listen to your gut instincts, you, it's like you get kicked in the gut, and eventually 
uh, it's going to give in and you're going to lose the energy to do the things you want. So that's what happened to me. Yeah, yeah I, I love that you mentioned it's like a kick in the gut because I always say that we, we do have two brains. It's not that we don't hear this. We hear this everywhere. We do have two brains. We have our microbiome, our gut, our intuition in our, in our actual brain. And those two are working together. I mean, it comes down the back of your neck all the way down to your gut. And it's, it's if we're not listening to ourselves and saying something's off with how I feel in my body, uh, I think uh, that, that you know we're not doing ourselves a, a, a good service. Right. So you talk oh. about pranayama and you talk about the breath work. I love that you talk about that too, because actually the my musician behind my podcast, Lip Bone, is uh, practices pranayama breath work with his music. So there's there's a lot nice. of synergy here. I love it. And people that know Lip Bone know that he uh, he's a a big big person behind that that kind of music, which is beautiful. But Ooh. I also want to take a moment to just say thank you to our friends at Squadcast for providing the space for us to have this moment with Niraj talking about Salma breath and really everything. We're going even further. We haven't even touched on breath yet. He's the renegade pharmacist and he mm. is just a wealth of information from your own journey from health to healing. And, mm. and the, when you touched on the fact that you were going into all these forums where people were, you know, sharing their upsets, sharing their, their own traumas, and by doing a lot of trauma work myself with clients, I completely understand where you're coming from because you're putting yourself in a container where it's constant negativity. And I'm not saying we should not have a community where we could be heard because everything we say is valid. And sometimes we need that. But sometimes when we're stuck in that container, we're not giving ourselves permission to find the joy on the other side that really does live there. If we just give ourselves a chance to what surround yourself with the vibe of your tribe, right? So finding yourself in that position where you were able to find like-minded people and modalities and healing methods that served you, did that move you into more of the breath work and, and incorporating the, the music in and the breath and all of your holistic background yeah. pairing with your actual pharmacy background, which is beautiful. You're able to pair them together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what happened was I discovered like, because uh, when you've got colitis, you're like, especially the, what I had, you're going to the toilet so many times a day. It's, it's, you can't leave the house. You're just too embarrassed. So I spent a lot of time just chilling in my bed, just contemplating what am I going to do with my existence. And I started to get into all this meditation music, brainwave music. And I, that sparked my creativity. I was like, whoa, okay. And I think this is a big part of my healing as well, is we get so left brain educated from a young age, we lose the right brain power. And this doesn't, if this doesn't, this is a muscle as well. If you don't exercise the right brain, it get your corpus callosum, which is the part that brings the two together, it loses its power too. And you lose yourself. You lose your who you are. You become robotized, mm -hmm. and it confuses the operating system of the mind. Right. So, literally, we have an operating system, and we can consciously control it, like a, or we can allow other people to program you, which unfortunately a lot of people do. So, with music and this right type of music, we can flow into different brainwave states, mm -hmm. which are lower brainwave frequencies, where you can reprogram this operating system and clear the clutter. I actually found a book um, at that time, which was called The Power of Your Subconscious Mind, and it's by Dr. Joseph Murphy, who's considered like the father of personal development. He actually was a pharmacist like me, but he was also an Ayurvedic practitioner and into Christian science. He was a, mm. a, a, a he loved uh, Christianity. So he brought the two worlds together in this book, and it was all about using a process he called scientific prayers, which is like using mantras whilst in a meditative state, right, where you speak directly to the God within, which is the unconscious mind, the source of all mm -hmm. things. So using the right mantras and affirmations with conviction, you could fine-tune the operating system to literally manifest whatever it is that you want. And I was like, wow, okay, if this is true, well, that's going to be a miracle. Let's test it out. So I, what I found was the best sanctuary of all was the sauna. 
mm. going into sauna. And I loved getting to that heat, that, that heat energy. What happens as well, you produce a lot of blood flow to the, to the midbrain, the, the, um, the seat of our mm. unconscious mind. And you go into this like trance like state and I'm, I'm doing a special breathing pattern, okay, with toning, which gets you into really deep, profound altered states where you breathe in for half the time as you breathe out. So you're doubling your exhalation time. In for four, out for eight seconds, over and over again in the sauna. And then when you get charged a bit, making tones like, oh, and I do that. All, sometimes like I get caught because other people come into the sauna and go, what the hell is he doing? But, <laughs> like I'll try and do it and nobody is watching. But yeah, so I do this over and over and I'll be getting into these very deep trance states where I visualize who, I am, who I'd be if I was fully back to normal health. I'd, I'd play a story in my mind of me doing the things I'd want to do when I'm at full fitness. Like play so creative- it like a movie. A mind Creative movie. visualization, basically. I mean, That's that is, is so powerful. Yeah. I love doing that with clients. I love doing that myself where I just, yeah. the vision that you put yourself in and like the outcome of the life that you want. And the process yeah. is part of the outcome. You have to enjoy the process as yes. well, you know, but it's beautiful when you're there. Those, the, It's like you're creating a film in your mind of where you want your life to be. And it's so possible, everyone. It's so possible. It is so easy. And, and I was, so I was doing that and using words because I'm very auditory. So I would use affirmation mantras. Like I am ha- whole, perfect, strong, loving, harmonious, and happy. I'll just say that over and over and over again uh, in this state. That had a huge impact in my health, I think. And I've taught many people this. Uh, and that's actually the foundation of Soma Breath. It's based on rhythmic breathing, using visualization tools, and breath retentions. And I actually, and tones. What I discovered as well was the power of kumbhaka. Kumbhaka is holding your breath in certain ways where you create a state called intermittent hypoxia. And in this state of intermittent hypoxia, you actually wake up endogenous stem cells um, out of circulation. Your body adapts to a low oxygen environment for a minute. You produce more red blood cells and you get better blood flow going to your heart, your brain, and to your organs. Um, So when you practice this, it, can, it actually helps get the oxygen to where it really needs to go in your body. Even though you're creating a short period of no, low oxygen in your bloodstream, it overall increases your ability to get oxygen to where it needs to go. It's a very sacred technique. But what it also is about is when you hold your breath for long periods of time, it actually trains you to go into very deep meditative states. Because if you imagine life is a series of inhales and exhales, right? When you breathe in, you inspire. When you breathe out, you expire. Inspiration means to breathe in, right? When you breathe out, you expire. And it's when you breathe out and hold your breath for long enough, it's like you press pause on life for a moment. And this allows this operating system to defrag, and it helps to resolve emotions that have been blocked. And if you do it more and more, it actually increases your ability to meditate. Because you go into such a place of stillness and these powers of affirmations and, and subconscious reprogramming are amplified because you, you go into this deep, deep brainwave states for a moment. And if you are working with somebody like I train our instructors to deliver transformations by getting people into these meditative states where they're bombarding them with affirmations and taking on guided visual journeys and uh, taking people to peak experiences like where you literally feel like you're connecting to something higher than yourself i mean this is what i got famous for later on um but in my healing journey i was doing this for myself and and it was very profound so it's a combination of this technique mm-hmm. followed by um change of diet lifestyle and then actually changing my environment because we become our environment absolutely right? my, my family environment like i love them but they're the most like like over caring like family ever they're like they're so worried about me being safe and so anything weird i'd be trying that's not off the prescription right they would be like immediately shutting it down because it's not safe and i'm gonna end well, up getting their into fears. it's their fears yeah. so yeah so i i had to literally move 
myself out of that. And plus, there's a lot of drama in my house with my mum and dad and all that. That's a whole other story. But so I moved to a whole other environment, whereas I was much more comfortable to be me. I moved in with my best friend, who's actually a doctor as well. He was also not into his career anymore. Actually, it was a psychiatric hospital that had been converted. It was an asylum. It could be converted into doc- doctor's accommodation. And I moved into there, and that, my healing process was done. And I actually wrote my best music I ever did, and it's still a lot of the soundtracks we use in Summer Breath, whilst in a converted psychiatric asylum where they were doing, from the 60s, so they were doing all kinds of like yeah. electroshock stuff. And there were moments, I'm not kidding, when we'd be in these profound altered states, because um, me and my friend were doing it together, where I felt like those spirits were coming through me and like kind of helping me, you know, because these people have been the most mistreated of all and abused. That you know? actually is fascinating to me that you did that. Because when you first said that you moved into an old psychiatric hospital, my first thought was, oh, the ghosts. And I don't just mean like, ooh, ghosts. I mean, like, there's energy that exists everywhere. And we know the kind of things that were were done to people. Look, there's stuff that's still done to people to this day. But that was like commonplace back then, the lobotomies, the electroshock therapy, just pill popping and putting, you know, it's it's like one flew over Big the time. cuckoo's nest, right? Big so time. when you put somebody in that environment within the walls, if it is not felt cleansed, but the fact that you had a positive experience in that is just you mo- you moved out of a negative experience, not negative meaning the family was negative, but just the energy and the environment and other people's fears were, we don't want to embody that. We want to create our own container, right? But to yeah. move into another container that at one point was so <laughs> negative and creating this light in some of your best work. Oh, it's fascinating. That's, uh, that's why to I healed. Me. That's why I came to full yeah. And then I made all this music that became Music Therapy Library, which I licensed to therapists. That was my first business that all worked online. I studied how to create an online business. I highly recommend people do this right now in this day and age. Everything's gone online. Learn how to make some kind of income online and multiple streams of it because I was then able to move to where I visualized my um, dream which was to live in a tropical environment with the beach and live a laptop lifestyle and, and work from anywhere, that kind of thing, time freedom, you know, that was my biggest values. What happened was very strange because I, I at that time, I, I called myself as a music producer, Amaya. Amaya was my name, right? Mm-hmm. And I got a call when I'd launched my site. And this was the first holiday I had, by the way. And what happened was this guy from Langkawi, called me up and said, hey, I would love to call my, I'm building a spa in Langkawi, and I'd love to name it after you and use your music. Is that possible? I was like, what? Okay. <laughs> but he says, what do you want for it? And I said, well, how about you just um, make this my first holiday um, out of England since I've been sick for, for a year and a half, and, um, and we'll talk in person. So that's exactly what happened. Flew out to Langkawi. And I, I remember going to this spa, beautiful spa in Langkawi, Malaysia, and hearing my music playing out from the speakers. And it, the whole thing is just revolves around the, the music I've created. And I'm having this two-hour massage with this amazing uh, expert, you know, in, in all these ancient, uh, like, Thai-style massage techniques, and with music, with brainwave music. And he was charging people... <laughs> to have like just one hour like massage treatments with my music playing in the spa. I was like, this is to dream. This is what I want to do. And yeah, so then I, after that, I was like, well, I'm going to live in a, I have to live in a tropical environment. I discovered um, Kopangan. I moved to Kopangan. There was a whole thriving community there in Thailand and, uh, and the rest is history. You know, it's turned into, that's, that was the birthplace of Soma Breath and which has now turned into a big, movement around the world where I train people to do what I did for myself and others, mm. um, all the things I've learned, and in a holistic way, which is based on Ayurvedic principles, where there's no one size fits all, where I'm not teaching you one trick, technique, it's a whole pharmacy of techniques with the right applications, the right doses for the individual, because everyone's different, right? And what the problem is in the world today is there's too many one trick uh, wonders yeah. 
where they claim that this can fix everything. It's not true because a lot of those uh, people who have got done those one tree wonders come to us because they, those those things made them worse. So I I like helping people to identify instructors to identify when to use something and when not to use something. Almost actually more is like when not to use something because you can actually make somebody worse with the yeah. wrong methods. Yeah. And the other thing is, is that, you know, these are tools. And yeah. one thing I do, I, I share often is that I might be certified or use a certain tool with my, in, within my practice. You might use a tool or many tools within your practice, but it's a tool and tools go in the box of the, the, the toolbox. And we use what we need when we need to fix certain things. It's not a one size fix, fits all. It's not one method. It's find what works for you in that space and time and know that you have all of these beautiful things available to you. But it's really our choice because I think in modern medicine a lot of times it's like oh you have this this is the pill that fixes it that's the pill that's the pill that's how you're going to fix that yeah and it's not about fixing and you know I the fact that you're going first of all I'm like jealous because I, I well jealous in a positive way <laughs> lovingly jealous that you're able to live that kind of life right now because it's in my mind to get there too mm. so yeah, every every guest I have on this show is uh, is <laughs> propels me forward yeah it really does even though I've been doing this work for you know as, as long as I've been doing the idea of that life and being in that kind of environment really does appeal to me because then you're also around the kind of people you want to be around so that you can serve more people and help more people. yeah and yeah. it's the more we do on ourselves, the more we have the ability to help others. And in doing so, and I just want to share this before we get too far into this, is, uh, you know, Niraj is also sharing a beautiful free webinar on healing and rejuvenating through the breath work, through his somer work. And that is going to be available on the podcast page. I highly recommend you download it. I have not actually done it as of this time of us recording yet, but I can bet your bottom dollars I'm doing it right after because I... I love breath work. And I also want to share with folks, listen, if this resonates with you, Holistically Speaking Podcast, if this resonates with you, please share it with one other person, pass it forward, pay it, pay it forward, and bring these different modalities and techniques and possibilities into your life. And, and you know, dive into that toolbox when you need it. So uh, going forward, uh, you, you live in this beautiful place. Where are you right now at this moment? I am in Ibiza. Ibiza oh, in Spain. Wow. Another island, so, one of my favorite islands. And this is yeah. where you are currently. So just finding yourself in those kind of environments where they bring you joy yeah. and happiness. We just Peace. rented a, a retreat space here, yeah, like my dream little. It's like mm. a, a small retreat space, but it's our first um, test of uh, Casa Soma, uh, mm -hmm. which will be our you know, place where people come and come for retreats. So we really start booking um spots at the retreats so i might have to grab a plane ticket at some Come point along. <laughs> i'd love yeah. to and it's what? still it's still nice weather up until like january feb yeah and then it gets a little chilly yeah but we have a sauna in the in the villa okay. and i like it when it's a bit cooler because the problem yeah. with copangan is very hot mm. i like again that's an ayurvedic thing like depending on your constitution some people thrive in the hot climate. Some people, it burns them out. Like fire pitta, I'm vata pitta, but pitta types of fire, we can just get too hot in, in the, um, you know, those tropics. So I love this climate. Mediterranean climate is my mm -hmm. climate. Me too. Yeah. Well, it's balance, yeah. right? It's all about balance. So yes. finding the balance that works for you. Well, I want to play a little game with you that I love to do with my, my list, my guests, if you'll, uh, you do me the honors. I do a game called oh. a rapid fire. And just in what we've been talking about, I pull words of what you said. And I just want to see what the first word that comes to mind. We just like to have a little fun here. Listeners love this part. <laughs> Are you game? Okay. Yeah. Sure. Let's do it. Okay. Great. Here we go. Just one word. Ayurvedic. Wisdom. Nutrition. Essential. Music. Soul. Like that. Pharmacist. Money. 
Profit. <laughs> Profit. I hear you, my friend. Yeah. You took a you took a moment to to come back on that one. You had to think about it. What about the renegade? Renegade. Important. Breath. Life. Mm. Indeed. Soma. Everything. Mm. Indeed. Beautiful. So much wisdom coming from you. Niraj, I am, I am, it, this has been a joyful conversation. I just want to hold space for you to share anything specifically with listeners of Holistically Speaking that you might want them to walk away with in this moment. Yeah, sure. Um, I would say like, you know, like I, I think people should go away with something useful and practical that they can do, right? Mm-hmm. And everyone wants to live longer, right? Everyone wants to look younger. Pranayama was actually developed by studying animals in nature, okay? Mm. So is yoga, right? It, which is, pranayama is a branch of yoga. So if you look at the animal kingdom, animals that, and I, I'm all about model success, right? So you look at uh, animals that live a long time, they breathe very slow. Like they breathe at uh, one to two breaths a minute. Whales, for example, breathe less than one breath a minute. And they can hold their breath for two hours at a time and they live 200 years plus, right? Now, animals that don't live a long time, like rats and mice, they breathe very, very fast, like 150, 300 breaths per minute. And uh, there are some weird anomalies to this, right? The naked mole rat lives primarily underground in a hypoxic environment, rich with uh, CO2, very low oxygen, it can hold its breath for 18 minutes at a time. And guess what? It lives 30 years free of disease, right? They're rats, mm. but they're different from, real, from other rats. Now, humans, we have the conscious ability to control our breath, right? And to change our breathing patterns and our default breathing patterns and our ability to hold our breath, right? So there is a strong correlation in the animal kingdom between longevity, lifespan, health, disease, tendency to get the disease, and breathing rate, and how long you can hold your breath. The, the, the longer you can hold your breath, the slower the breathing pattern is a strong indicator of longevity, right, in mm. the animal kingdom. Now, that's a correlation argument, and, you know, um, that's useless without mechanism. A lot of pharmacists, actually, pharmaceutical companies use correlation arguments to get drugs onto the market, but they use very weak uh, arguments which don't have mechanisms. You need to be able to explain why that could be. So here's why you could live longer if you slow your breathing down and can train yourself to hold your breath for longer. Here's why. It's all down to oxidative stress. So... There was a scientist called Helmut Sees, who is the father of redox chemistry, which is all about how oxygen reacts in your body, right? And oxygen is necessary, right? Because it's the ingredient, it's the fuel that when you respire, it burns with sugar to produce ATP energy that drives life. So Helmut Sees says, although it's very difficult to live without oxygen, right? Because you can only last a few minutes, right? It's also very difficult to live with oxygen because of oxidative stress, because the sheer process of breathing itself produces oxidative stress. And oxygen is highly reactive, and it causes corrosion in the body. It makes you rust over time. It's what makes us age. It's actually what makes us age is oxygen. So if you look at yoga and pranayama, you'll see that the whole system, traditional yoga and pranayama, is about reducing your breathing, slowing it right down, and increasing your ability to hold your breath for longer periods. And Lao Tzu, the Chinese philosopher, said, the perfect human breathes as though they're not breathing at all. And if you look at yogis as well, who are very super advanced yogis, they hardly Mm -hmm. breathe. They don't need to breathe, right? And also yogis go and live at the Himalayas, top of mountains. There's a reason why. is because... High oxygen, uh, carbon dioxide, low oxygen, mm-hmm. right? So our entire system of slowing breath actually is, at a, a nutshell, all about um, lowering your need for oxygen. 
so that you're really efficient in using oxygen. Again, going back to the car. If you have an old car which isn't efficient, right, the engine basically is going to break down faster because it splurts gas, it guzzles gas, it's not efficient, and you get more wear and tear faster. A finely tuned, really like new model of car like a Mercedes, a, you know, one of those top top of the range of Mercedes where the engine's so finely tuned, it just runs forever and it hardly sound, makes a sound because it's so efficient you burn, burning oxygen. This is what Soma Breast is designed to do, is to train you to be, be like one of those super efficient uh, cars that just runs forever and ever. That's, that's what we're about. That's our goal, right? And it, we do this by training you to, to be able to hold your breath for long periods and to slow your breathing down. So we have a bunch of different techniques and courses all designed to do this for you, but to do it in a way which is right for you, your energy type, who you are, so that it's done in a safe way, all right? We're not just showing you into deep end, making you do extreme stuff like other people do. So, yeah, that's, that's in a nutshell the philosophy of what we're about. And the net side effect of all of this is that you get oxygen into your cells where it needs to go. Because if you, if you breathe too fast, faster than you need to, and most people do because emotionally they're stressed, and that means you start breathing mm. faster. You over-breathe. And if you breathe through your mouth, you over-breathe. You breathe out mm. too much CO2. CO2 is the prana. CO2 is the gas that allows oxygen to come off your blood cells and go to the cells that it needs to go. Without enough CO2, you actually uh, have too much oxygen on your red blood cells and not enough in your tissue cells, your organ cells, muscle cells. Mm -hmm. That's when you get disease. So by solving this CO2 problem, right, by slowing breathing down, learning to hold your breath and still your breath, okay, you basically prevent disease. And what CO2 also does is it calms erratic thoughts. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when you're having a panic attack, one of the things mm -hmm. you do is you breathe in and out for a bag. The reason why? You're breathing in CO2 because CO2 calms you down, right? So when you calm down these exciting neurons, when, when you mm -hmm. have the presence of oxygen, you actually can think more clearly. When you think more clearly, and you get more um, oxygenation of your tissues and stuff, um, not only are you like going to make better decisions and get better results in your life, right? But also, because of that extra blood flow, you become more virile and more um, your libido goes up. So there's all these amazing uh, benefits of slowing your breathing down and learning to hold your breath for longer periods. All right. If if that one thing you just said helps people to tune in. <laughs> Who doesn't want a better libido, right? And exactly, it, the, right? bringing it back to the car analogy is really helpful too. You know, uh, the breath work is just incredible. And and yeah. the, the the download that you're sharing actually gives you a little sample of this. Is that correct? A little bit about breathing and how to breathe correctly. That's right. Yeah. So learning how to breathe. Because, I mean, we, we go into that state of panic and we we tend to – breathe really fast and that does nothing for our nervous system nothing but Not well nothing positive rather so these tools these tools can be so helpful to just help you slow your roll a little bit just slow your roll yeah i mean That's i'll give you do. one one recent story we had a lady who had fibromyalgia doctors uh ruled her out of any kind of uh solution and she was on 36 pills a day she was so sick that she was puking up her own feces it was that bad and she lost a, almost mm -hmm. a third of her body weight she was really sick she found our stuff and decided to do it every day like according to my protocol and guess what we have this amazing testimony of her she basically said that she has come off all the medications she's back to full health her body's in shape and she now wants to share this with the world. So that's, amazing. that's because we're, we're improving blood flow to those areas. Now, there are some cases where the breathing is really affected, and that's usually people who um, have COPD. Mm. COPD is a different thing altogether. COPD, COPD is um, 
like where there's a disease of the lungs, where the, there's no gaseous exchange happening or very low gaseous exchange happening from the lung to the blood. Now mm -hmm. that's the problem. That's the problem. Okay. That's so that you can help as well with a gas that we all produce, right? Free of charge called nitric <laughs> oxide. Yeah. The way we produce nitric oxide is by humming. When you chant OM or hum, OM and vibrate this area here mm -hmm. and just keep doing it over and over again, right? That nitric oxide as a gas actually um, is something that causes vasodilation and bronchodilation. It actually helps dilate the blood vessels. So just doing those long exhales with the, the hum is a very, very healing thing. Like, okay, so I'll give you an example. A friend of mine, he got hit with COVID and in England and he got really sick and got admitted into ICU. And all he did, I told him, was to hum, hum, hum. The doctors basically said that if you don't take all these meds, you're, you're dead, right? He had two, he basically, they said, you've got two days left. You're so sick. And he called me up and he was like in a panic. He was stressed. And I said, no, there's really not much I can do like, to, to, you know, to stop you from, I mean, you have to follow your doctor's advice. Mm -hmm. Like you have to, you have to do that because I can't do anything. But what you can try is to produce as much nitric oxide as you can yourself. And the way to do that is shut your mouth and breathe through your nose from now on. Right. Try not to talk too much. Breathe, shut your mouth. Breathe through your nose in and out slowly and hum. Do orm all the time. He's an Indian, so he was familiar mm. with orms. Mm -hmm. But you just have to hum. Mm. So just told him to hum, and he just hummed and hummed and hummed. Two days later, the, the doctors were baffled. They were like, I can't believe it. You, you don't need to be on all these meds anymore. You're actually all right. And he got discharged, and he was fine. It, it actually is very peaceful when you do the ohms and you're humming and the vibration in the body. And yeah. especially when you're in a collective with other people doing it and that tone is going throughout the room. And, you know, people that aren't familiar with meditation or or somatic breathing or just breathing and the that whole energy that that you tend to do in meditation where they're like, oh, this ohm stuff, what is that? They're... <laughs> There is true power in it because you're using the own vibration of your body. And how soothing is that? When you think about it, and I talk about this uh, a lot just in my work with Havening, is that it's like it's like the first thing that happens when you're putting your your when you come out of the womb is you're putting your mother's arms, you're cradled, you're rocked. There is a soothing there's a soothingness that happens when you are rocked. When you're in the, I fall asleep all the time in the car because it's the rocking motion. We rock ourselves constantly. So imagine that energy moving through your body when you're constantly in vibration. It is absolutely the most beautiful feeling. And you do tend to just kind of calm the mind. So pairing that together with the breath work must be unbelievable. You know, and mm. I, I saw some of the testimonials that were shared by people that have attended your workshops and your retreats and just the feeling they had right afterwards. It's like mind blowing. Yes. So it, it's nice to see that. It's nice to see that kind of energy with people and hopefully using that to go forward powerfully and make choices in your life where you can live the resilient life that you, every one of us is born to live, right? hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah, Totally. This yeah. was such a beautiful conversation. Again, I Love just it. want to mention we're we. I'm so elated to just have you here. We're we're uh, talking about soma breath. Uh, Naraj is a is the developer, the creator of soma breath, and the renegade pharmacist. I as much as as pharmacy didn't bring back the most positive word in the in our in our uh, doing our little game. It does have value with the knowledge that you have, being able to use what you learned in the Western medicine world and pair it together with what you're doing now holistically. So good on you. But anyway, you so I just want to mention he's also sharing a free re webinar about healing and rejuvenating with breath work. You can find that on the podcast page here at Holistically And Speaking. you can get a... Yeah, sample there. You can test it out there. Yeah. One of our, I one of our signature it. techniques. Oh, fabulous. 
So yeah. we'll have that. And there's plenty more out there that shares who you are and uh, yeah. pass it along. Share it with your friends. Do a little work on your own. See the difference. Let me know on Holistically Speaking after how it impacted you. And I'll forward that on to Niraj and let him know that that they learned about it right here on Holistically Speaking. So thank you so much for your time and your your grace and your knowledge and just your spirit. It's been such a pleasure. If you're going to do one thing, I suggest you grab that free healing and rejuvenating with breathwork webinar that Naraj is sharing with listeners by visiting the link on the podcast page. And if you want to learn how to heal your traumas with Havening, set up a free discovery call with me. I would love to show you how to put the power of active emotional well-being right back in your own hands. You can also connect with me on social media at Hilary Russo. As you know, I'm always listening. And if you're breathing in all of this goodness from this episode, consider sharing it with just one other person and go ahead and subscribe and leave a rating or review on Apple Podcasts or anywhere your headphones take you. Holistically Speaking is produced by Alan Seals with music by Lip Bone Redding and recorded on Squadcast. Thinking of starting a podcast of your own? Give Squadcast a try. I shared a free trial on my podcast page. Go ahead, tell your story, use your voice and connect with others. I believe in you. Thanks for listening and breathing in with me. And remember to always be kind to your mind. And don't forget to laugh.